This is New York City Vietnam Recognition Day. We're at 55 Water Street here in New York City where Vietnam Veterans Plaza is located. It's a day to recognize and honor those who served in Vietnam and also those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you so much for being here. It's our honor to host you at this year's Vietnam Veterans Day. My name is Dan McSweeney. I am honored to serve as the President of the United War Veterans Council. And I would like to welcome our special guests this morning, Commissioner Lori Sutton, Mr. Michael Buccini, Colonel Joe Ramos, Mr. Salvatore Cassano, Ms. Michelle Delafav, Mr. Doug McGowan, Mr. Mark Otto, Mr. Vince McGowan, Mr. Harvey Bagg, and Mr. Joseph Graham. Thank you for our special guest being here. Hoorah. Our first speaker this morning is a gentleman with a very deep personal connection to everything that I'm saying. He understands legacy incredibly well. And so I'd like to welcome to the podium my friend, the chairman of the United War Veterans Council, Mr. Doug McGowan. Hoorah, Doug. How's everyone doing this morning? It's always both an honor and a pleasure to join you all here at Vietnam Veterans Plaza. As a son of a Vietnam veteran who happens to be the founding president of the United War Veterans Council, this place and this event have a very personal significance to me. I spent really a good deal of my child childhood watching both my father and all of his compatriots, uh, Vince McGowan over here, uh, work to serve his fellow veterans and our broader community. I, I remember seeing the, the personal struggles, veterans in need with no one to turn to, Veterans Day parades with only a few hundred participants marching up Fifth Avenue, and frankly, quite a bit of apathy from both our citizens and our elected officials. But I also remember the camaraderie and sense of purpose shared by my father and all of his compatriots, all of those he worked with here in New York City and beyond. They thought to remind the public of its sacred obligation to the men and women who defend our freedoms, both at home and abroad. They fought to care for each other. They fought for those who came after them, including myself. They fought for me and they fought for all of us, post 9-11, veterans of modern warfare, desert war veterans, Panama veterans, every single one of us who decided to step up and serve our country. I owe, and my generation owes, a debt of gratitude to our Vietnam veterans. Events like th this offer us that chance to express that gratitude, and they remind us that, the, that we are a part of a continuum of service as old as America itself. Today, in observance of Vietnam Veterans Day, we, we renew our pledge to our Vietnam veteran compatriots. Just as we carried on your legacy on the battlefield, we commit to you that we will continue to carry on your, your legacy here at home. So thank you once again, and welcome home. Thank you very much, Doug. I'd now like to officially introduce the newest member of our team, the United War Veterans Council Vice President, Mark Otto. Mark, if you could come up here, please. Mark served in the U.S. Marine Corps and is a veteran of the Panama Invasion and Desert Storm. He has been actively involved with our veterans community for many years, both with traditional VSOs, such as the American Legion and the VFW, and with newer organizations such as Team Red, White, and Blue and the Headstrong Project. In a moment, Mark will be leading us through the rest of our program. But first, we have a special presentation from the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration. You see, Mark is not only a veteran himself, but he is the son of a Vietnam vet, U.S. Army Sergeant Herbert John Otto, a New Yorker. Our friends at the Vietnam War Commemoration have something for Mark to take to his father, and I'd like to call to the podium Colonel Joe Ramos, U.S. Army retired, representing the commemoration. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, my name is Joe Ramos, and I serve in the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration. Our office is charged with coordinating the Department of Defense's plan to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. The Vietnam veteran lapel pin is a lasting memento of the nation's thanks. The pin's purpose is to recognize, thank, and honor United States military veterans 
who served during the Vietnam War period. Eligibility consists of all veterans on active duty in the United States Armed Forces at any time during the period 1 November 1955 to 15 May 1975. Regardless of vocation or eligible to receive the lapel pin, the message, a grateful nation thanks and honors you, is embossed on the back closest to the heart of the wearer. The official name of the commemoration is included to remind each veteran that this is a national initiative and that this lapel pin is the nation's way of saying thanks and appreciation. So, on behalf of the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, I thank all Vietnam veterans and their families for their valor, service, and sacrifice. May God bless you. Friends and distinguished guests, it's an honor to be here with you today. Like many of you, I was raised to be patriotic. It's, it's with great pride that I say that I'm the fifth person in my family to serve in war. As a U.S. Marine, I served from 1988 to 1992. At that time, I had the privilege of serving under some outstanding Vietnam veterans, including Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf and Colin Powell. Upon my military departure, I landed my first job on the New York Stock Exchange thanks to a Vietnam veteran. Most importantly, I'll forever be tied to the Vietnam War through my parents. Dad served as an Army Sergeant in Vietnam from 1966 through 1969. He met my mother and they fell in love during his first tour. Dad described his job in ordinance as a cushy job compared to the grunts that were fighting in the war. However, war came to my parents' doorstep when they were separated during the 68 Tet Offensive. By some miracle, Dad was able to find my mother and bring her safely back to the United States. I'm happy to say they're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Yeah. Life has come full circle for me. Vietnam has shaped my life in many ways. It's an honor to be a part of the United War Veterans Council, which was resurrected by a group of Vietnam veterans, including Vince McGowan, Harvey Bagg, and the late Pat Gilterry. I want to personally thank you all for your service. Now we have some official recognition from our state and city. I'd like to ask Harvey Bagg and Vince McGowan, Emeritus um, Board Members of, of the United War Veterans Council, to pr please come up here. Joe Graham from Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 126, and Salvatore Cassano from Friends of Vietnam Veterans Plaza to step forward and please receive this recognition on behalf of our Vietnam veterans. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Bocchini. I'm the Deputy Director of the State Division of Veterans Affairs, and it's my privilege to be here today on behalf of the Governor, on behalf of Director Eric Hesse, and on behalf of all of the New York State uh, government employees who are veterans themselves, uh, to give this group of distinguished veterans the proclamation declaring uh, March 29th Vietnam Veterans Day in the state of New York. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Director Bacchini, and please convey our thanks to the Governor Cuomo. Next, we will have a, a proclamation from Mayor Bill de Blasio, presented by Lori Sutton, MD, retired U.S. Army Brigadier General and Commissioner of New York City Department of Veterans Services. You know, getting ready for today, pinching myself daily, thinking about, is this really true? Am I really leading a startup? in New York City government. I don't know y'all, but it's what we're doing. And we're not doing it alone. We've got Assistant Commissioner Jamal Othman, who's here today, Letitia Roussaw, manning a table. Please go and get information about your new Department of Veterans Services. We're so excited. A year ago, four people, 32 people today, and we are on a tear. Thanks to so many of you. I was reminded by Dr. Vince Molino from Staten Island yesterday that my, 
My first military mentor died yesterday. His name was Desmond Doss. He was a family friend. His wife stayed with my grandparents in Arizona while he was deployed. He was a medic, a conscientious objector, and a Purple Heart recipient and a Medal of Honor recipient. Uncle Desmond was my first mentor who inspired whatever else I've been blessed and privileged to do since. Uncle Desmond was in Okinawa when Mayor de Blasio and I first sat down to talk over two years ago. We realized that just possibly Uncle Desmond may have been the medic who saved the mayor's father's life during that horrific battle. The Korean War, all too often forgotten, except in the minds and the hearts and the souls of those who fought it, their families at home, and all of us who live on. My father served as a journalist in the Korean War. Moving to Vietnam, my first attachment to a Vietnam veteran was when I was in seventh grade. Colonel L. W. Whitford, Jr., a pilot who went down in Laos November 2nd, 1970. And then when I got to New York, the first veteran I met in New York was in Albany. It was before I'd ever heard of this position. We were doing a little bit of advocacy there on behalf of veteran business owners, and it was Sammy Mantilla who there told me about this city that my Lori and I were committed to making our home. Truly, we're all in this together, gang. I feel very blessed, and I want to just end here with a special message. A message for our Gold Star mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and all who are gathered here this time of year, a very difficult time, a year when we want our arms around you especially tight. And we want you to know that you are not alone that we remember and honor your service and sacrifice. And no one has honored the service and sacrifice of those who have given it all more than the Vietnam veterans, our brothers and sisters, so many of you here today, who despite the treatment that you got, the mistreatment that you received at the hands of your nation, you did not turn your backs. You have become the Patriot Guard riders. You have become the protectors of our airports, welcoming this generation of veterans home. You have absolutely, Joe, I'm looking at you here. <laughs> you have, through the Vietnam veterans of America, you have declared that never again will one generation turn its back on another. That's something to celebrate. We will never forget your service and sacrifice. We will always remember this memorial here, the stand, that, the, the ground that we stand on, and the noises, the sounds of freedom that are all among us will always live forward. Vietnam veterans, brothers and sisters, whether you served here on the home front, whether you were deployed, wherever you were, you raised your hands. Our families who were home living that burden, we are forever in your debt. We needed you then. We need you now more than ever. We will always need and appreciate you. And so it is a special, special treat for me on behalf of Mayor Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, to declare Saturday, March 25th, 2017, as New York City Vietnam Appreciation Day. Welcome home, you all. Now it is, it is my honor to recognize a lifelong supporter of our veterans community. Michelle De La Fave has been a friend to our Vietnam veterans in particular for decades. A native New Yorker, 
Michelle learned patriotism and love of performing from her parents. Her father, Michael, served in World War II and played in a Navy band where he met Michelle's mother, May, a dancer with the USO show. May was injured during a Japanese bombing raid on Guam. Michelle got her break singing and dancing as a gold digger on the Dean Martin show. In 1969 and 1970, Michelle traveled to Vietnam on two of Bob Hope's legendary USO Christmas tours. There, she performed for our troops on makeshift stages in the Vietnamese jungle, bringing our men and women, uh, our men and women respite from the war and a reminder of things at home. Ever since then, she's continued to perform for veterans in New York City and across the country. As a volunteer with the United War Veterans Council, she is always ready to serve our veterans, to raise their spirits, and to bring back treasured memories. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Michelle Delafave. <laughs> Michelle, on behalf of the United War Veterans Council, our Vietnam veterans, and our veterans of all eras, it's my honor to present you with our inaugural Service to Vietnam Veterans Awards. This is, this is pretty heavy. Okay, <laughs> so just be aware. <laughs> This is a day that uh, for many years we thought would never happen. And then uh, through perseverance and through the help of the political base that's taken over in the, in the, in the days of our seniority here, uh, we have found that uh, we're welcome and that the city is wide open, open arms for us. And uh, it's great to see that money is being spent and decisions are being made, all that will benefit not only Vietnam veterans, but the veterans community as a whole. And we really, really appreciate uh, the, the new leadership uh, in the city over the last 10 or 15 years that have really made all the difference in the world for us. Thank you, New York City. I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President. I want to thank uh, Vince McGowan and the McGowan family, Dan McSweeney, everyone who makes the veterans community such a pleasure to work with, obviously the commissioner and her staff. Yes, it is a time when we are honoring our veterans, World War II, World, all of Vietnam, Korea, uh, the ones who are coming back from uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, but I think more importantly, to be honest with you, Vince McGowan and his team set the stage and the Vietnam honoring today is just part of it. We do other, the, the parade is another example where it was nothing and now it's a really big deal with people wanting to participate. So it's, it's patriotic, it's family, it's all the families too. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into today and figuring out how the entire community can be honored. My husband is a Vietnam vet. He's not active as Vince McGowan knows, but he is, uh, respects the monuments, writes about the monuments. And uh, today is a special day for honoring the monument, but also the families and the individuals. It's a really great day. And if I could just add something, you know, Every day is Veterans Day here in New York City, but today really marks a particular celebration because it's been a, you know, re a really convergence of leadership over these last two years, and it's been the support of the mayor and the speaker and the chairman and the city council and uh, elected officials like Gail Brewer and, of course, activists like Vince McGowan and so many others who are gathered today marking also the first year of the new New York City Department of Veterans Service. First city to set up its own agency strictly devoted to veterans and their families and we're doing it here in New York City and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Vince McGowan and all of these advocates who are here today. Thank you. There's been a lot of changes, hasn't there? You uh, started your speech with, you started out with six, and now how many are you, uh, employees or whatever you... A year ago, June, we had four. Today, we have 32. But I will tell you, there's a story behind this. In the late 80s, it was Mayor Koch, who in response to Vietnam veterans like Vince and his brothers and sisters who were pounding on the doors of City Hall, rightly demanding better treatment. But then, you know, for almost 30 years, that little office just languished, never more than four or five folks strong until two years ago. And that convergence of leadership that I mentioned has led us directly to today. We have made, our city has made this essential municipal investment. And the greatest news of all is we're just beginning. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Hey, hoorah! Hoorah! <laughs> <laughs>
A very important part of, of war also are the nurses. And we have uh, from the Veterans Hospital some nurses. So could, tell us about the VA. Uh, I am Dr. Aitaman. I am the director of the Vision to Liver team. And these are all members of the VA New York Harbor and Bronx VA team members, pharmacy, pharmacy specialists, clinical Anna. I'm very happy to be here. Hi. Uh, we have Catherine. Hi. Nurse. Honored to be here. We have our nurse Hi. practitioner, Margarita Pashukyans. And our goal is to really do anything possible, whatever your healthcare needs are, as the VA, uh, VA. And also, we have hepatitis C screening, HIV sp screening, blood pressure, and uh, diabetes screening in the back in our mobile van. And uh, d were you part of the service, or how did you get involved? Um, doc, doc, you said your doctor. I am a veterans doctor for the past 30 years, and I absolutely love my veterans, absolutely. And we will do anything for them. We want them to come. We want to eradicate hepatitis C in all of them. So that's the goal, and we have the van out there, and we are doing screenings for that. And what would be the difficulties like during a Vietnam War for doctors? You're probably just uh, doing a lot of work right in the field and, and right on the... I haven't been there, but I have been taught by my Vietnam War vets what it was like over there. And uh, I have all just incredible thanks to all of them who served there as physicians or as in the military otherwise. Post-traumatic stress syndrome has been around since armies have marched and navies have sailed in all wars. Now we'll talk to some individuals who treat the hidden wounds of war. I'm Adam Friedman. I work at the David Lynch Foundation. We uh, bring transcendental teach transcendental meditation to veterans, survivors of domestic violence, and we have programs in uh, schools. And it helps people with veterans. It's amazing. Uh, Melvin should talk about that because he's a vet who learned TM and why don't you talk about talk a little about what TM did for you after coming home from Iraq. I'm a 100% disabled uh, from post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, I, I didn't think TM was going to work at all but I just went in there off a of fluke and uh, learned how to meditate and within 90 days I'm asymptomatic. I mean all, all the uh, post-traumatic stress symptoms just kind of gradually disappeared and went away. So I, I encourage every veteran, especially when it's offered here in New York City, I mean, it's offered for free. All you got to do is show up and fill out a form and, and, and we'll teach you how to meditate. And you'll, and you'll be surprised how, how much faster you're going to get better. And I'll just say, to give you a little, uh, Melvin's living proof it works, but if you like statistics, which I do, last year, we taught 233 vets to meditate. They had an average 51% reduction in trauma symptoms in, at one to two months after learning, 42% improvement in depression, and 25% improvement in sleep. And that's 77%, so that's in 180 vets who filled out these surveys. So it's, I was floored. I didn't, I didn't know do transcendental meditation before I got to this job. I was floored how well it works with veterans with post-traumatic stress. So that's us. How do they get in contact with you? Um, it, well, if you want to learn to meditate, email veterans at davidlynchfoundation.org. And boom, we'll, uh, we'll get you hooked up with a course and learn to meditate for free. All it takes is a little time. But this is Carol Ruane, and she is a Blue Star Mother. Now, first of all, what's the difference between a Blue Star Mother and a Gold Star Mother? That's a great question. Um, a Blue Star Mother is a mother of um, actively serving uh, military and uh, or um, have sons and daughters who have served in the military. Um, a Gold Star Mother or a Gold Star Family is a family who has lost a son or a daughter in uh, service to the military. 
And, and tell me about some of your activities as a Blue Star mother. Um, uh, some of the activities that we do is we raise funds for shipping over our boxes um, to our troops overseas. We get in-kind donations and we send all kinds of troops, uh, boxes, excuse me, over. Um, we also help our local veterans. I support the uh, Stony Brook Veterans home out in Stony Brook. We do events out there for them. We also participate in um, Northport Veterans uh, Home. We set up events out there for them. Uh, we bring them lunch, we play bingo, we do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, we're a Long Island based chapter but we are partnering with the United War Veterans Council to get a uh, chapter maybe started here in New York City. Well, that would be wonderful because we are in New York City right now. We're at 55 Water Street. This is the New York City Vietnam Veterans Recognition yes, Day. Is. And here is I'm where honored. the memorial is, the New York City Memorial. Yep. I'm honored to be here today. And we're honored to have you. You do this. It's, and, and, and just the importance to the troops on receiving things. Uh, the, the, we get lots of letters of thanks and, and they send us pictures of how grateful they are to get stuff that they don't have access to. So it, it's, you know, it warms a mother's heart <laughs> to see that they, you know, we're, we're making them happy and sending them boxes of a little love and a little hug <laughs> in each of those boxes. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from 55 Water Street. This is where the Vietnam Veterans New York City Memorial is located. This is all the time we have for this show. Hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching.